Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again for another time of Midweek Psalms, where we get together, read a psalm, reflect on it, and pray through it. Before we get into Psalm 6, I wanted to invite you to join us in worship on Sunday. If you feel comfortable, we are doing in-person worship services, which we had one this past weekend. It was awesome, it was great to see everybody, and it was a really safe and good experience. If you want to join us, uh, I will invite you to go to our website, limitreform.org backslash RSVP, and fill out the form for yourself and the people that you will be joining with. If you don't feel comfortable coming, that is okay, we get it. Um, I want you to know that we will be live streaming live on Facebook and YouTube on Sunday morning. So, however you're showing up, um, I look forward to you joining in worship. As always, if you want more content, if you want more videos, if you want more updates about what's going on in the life of Linwood, please uh, like our Facebook page or subscribe to us on YouTube. Alright, let's get to Psalm 6. We've been going through each one of the Psalms, and if you've joined us for every one, you might notice that there's a lot of sadness and sorrow being spoken and sung about in these Psalms. The Psalms, uh, if I didn't say it before, is the songbook, is the prayer book of God's people. It's been used to help shape and form people's prayers and give language to people in prayer um, since the time of King David, before Jesus. And, and today, the psalm is really about a prayer of um, some spoken during experience of sickness. Um, so as we read this, um, I hope that it can begin to invite you to think about people in your life, people in this world that you might want to lift up in prayer today because you know they're not feeling well or they're sick um, or going through um, the trials of seeing a loved one who is ill. So let's, let's get into this. Psalm 6. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul also is struck with terror while you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, save my life. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. And Sheol, who can give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. This prayer is one spoken by somebody who's experiencing some illness, some experience that is so overwhelming with grief. I think about just the, the times when I am sick, when I'm ill with the flu. I know that for me, it's a very intense experience. And I don't know about you, and I know that there are so many people dealing with such worse things than just the flu, but think about those times when you are sick, how, how your mind runs with these thoughts. How did I get ill? Will I ever get better? Uh, what's going on with me, right? And, and you kind of get that with the psalmist here. Uh, my soul is struck with terror while you, O oh Lord, how long? This person can't even put together a sentence without interrupting themselves with uh, just a question. God, how long is this going to take place? And uh, the, the very beginning strikes me, and I wanted to, to note this. O oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. This person is sick or ill and in distress, and they're beginning to wonder, oh, God, I must have done something wrong. Don't, don't cause this uh, and continue to cause this. And I want to bring this up because I think sometimes, at least for me, maybe for you, our mind wanders to, oh, God must be punishing me because of this. There's something going on and God uh, is punishing me. So, yeah, that's why I'm sick. And I just want to speak against that in every single way. Illness and disease are things that are contrary to the order and the good things that God had created. 
And so there is no way in which God causes these illness. We can't say that. We can't name that. We can't say to somebody, oh, this is just happening for a reason. That is the stupidest thing. It just angers me when those things are said. And I think more so this person is just trying to put together what's going on in their life and lifting it all up in prayer. But I want to point out another line that struck me. And it's this. Save my life, Lord. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. And so this person is asking God, based on what this person knows about God from previous times, the goodness that they have seen, the the trust that they have in God, the steadfast, incredible love that they have come to know. God, not not for anything else, but just according to your goodness and who you are and your great love, save me and restore my life. And, And by the end of the psalm, it says, the Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. They, they are trusting that God does, does hear and does act according to that great, unfathomable, steadfast love that God has for us. And so as, as we draw to a close here, the last thing that I want to say to you is, um, may, may this psalm help you today. May it bring to mind people who you know are struggling with illness or people who are watching loved ones and friends um, or just watching the world in its struggle with the pandemic, watching and feeling helpless uh, to do anything. May it bring to mind all those people. May it bring to mind maybe uh, a movement to show one act of kindness to somebody who's going through those situations that we talked about. I mean, in all, um, I hope that, that at some point uh, throughout this week, it, it draws you into prayer as well. And, and may you pray on behalf of others, or maybe yourself, and go through that experience. Name what's going on, and then name who God is, and may your heart be drawn into trusting that God will provide that. Let's pray. Lord God, I'm mindful this morning of so many who are crying out to you because they are sick, they are ill, they are in distress and discomfort, physically or or mentally. Lord, I pray that you would bring healing, that you would bring and give comfort, that you would give peace to those people, whatever their circumstances may be, whether they're dealing with, with COVID, cancer, or another disease, or illness, or just a common cold, or allergies, or the flu that is just so annoying. Lord, I also pray and lift up and and ask that you would give comfort and peace and strength to those people who are watching loved ones, or friends, or others uh, walk through illness and feel helpless. God, Come alongside them and lift them up and give them hope. Lord, we also pray for uh, doctors and nurses, scientists, uh, people who are uh, trying to get a vaccine for COVID or, or for anything else, working out cures for cancer and other diseases that we wish to eradicate. We know that, that your mind and your heart is about this work, and so we pray that you bless it. Lastly, I pray and ask that you would give uh, thought and expression and passion to, to me and to, um, to anyone showing up today. That you give them a, a thoughtfulness about how to show kindness and love. Small acts that can make a huge difference. We lift all this up in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week. Peace.